Shabbat Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha, Kodash. Double honors to the Apostle Elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessings to the hopeful elect. The names that you just heard me say is the true names of the Heavenly Father and the Son. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. That Yah is He and Hawa means to be. And the true name of the Heavenly Father's Son, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, his name in the Hebrew is Yahweh Shai. Yah is He and Yahweh Shai is Deliverer or Savior. And those are the power, that is the God that we believe in, right? According to faith, which is a very important thing that I want to get into right now. Because with Sakari, uh, the recent video of uh, certain Sakari members coming out, I think, that if I'm not mistaken, they were talking to a Christian about, you know, uh, pretty much the keeping of the law makes you righteous, which is incorrect. The keeping of the law does not make you righteous. Now, I want to focus, which may get some other precepts as well, but I want to focus on Romans, the third chapter, and Lord's willing, I may jump into also Romans, the fourth chapter as well, because Romans, the fourth chapter goes into Abraham, right? And like it says in Romans 15 and 4, for whatsoever is written a four times written for our learning, right? That we through our patience and comfort of scriptures might have hope, right? Hope, faith. These are pretty much the cornerstones of pretty much of this ministry is hope, faith. And what? That Lord's willing, we be of the elect. Lord's willing, we make it out of here. Not according to the works of the law, but according to faith. Like it's written of in the scriptures, we are prisoners of hope, not prisoners of the law, prisoners of hope. Now, yes, we are under the law because we are Israelites, right? Uh, the law was given to us. But what? Again, righteousness does not come by the law. Righteousness comes by according to faith. And I want to get into that. Now, I'm going to start at verse 19 in Romans, the third chapter. It says, now we know, now I have it in the split Bible, so I might hit the NLT at a couple of times. So it says, now we know that uh, what things soever the law said, it said to them who are under the law. Now, who again was under the law? Israel, not the whole world, <clears throat> right? The Israelites were under the law. They were the ones that, like it says in John, if I'm not mistaken, that sin is transgression of the law. The only ones that can transgress against the Heavenly Father are Israelites. So going to the Messiah, the one who the world only calls Jesus Christ, he did not die for the whole world like some people are, uh, misunderstand with John 3.16. He only died for the nation of Israel. For the love of God, he even said it out of his own mouth when you read it in red letter. I believe that's Matthew 15 and 24. He said, I am only sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. It's literally right there in your book. But we understand that some people have been blinded. That's why they can't see it. But it's literally right there. The man said it himself. But you're going to sit there and say that he tried to save the whole world. But that's a topic for another video. We're not going to get into that. Right? So again, who are under the law? The Israelites. That every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before the Heavenly Father. Now, even when you go into that word world there, so you know, it's cosmos. So we understand that that's speaking about Israel again. Right? Therefore, by the deeds of the law, right? Again, by the deeds of the law, which let me even look into our word deeds, just to see what it may say there, right? Because again, Sicaria is making a point, or members of Sicaria are making a point that, oh, the law is what makes you righteous. No. Right, okay, so the deed, whatever, okay. Doesn't have much there. So it says, Verse 20 again says, therefore, by the deeds of the law shall no flesh be justified in the sight in whose sight the heavenly father for by the law. I'm sorry, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. If you read down the NLT, it says for no one can ever be made right with God by doing what the law commands. The law simply shows us how sinful we are. So it's right there in the book of Romans, even for these individuals in Sicari, that what the keeping of the law does not make us right in the sight of the heavenly father why because if i'm not mistaken uh if you go up it talks about uh paul says that um we have all fall short of the glory right actually he goes through this uh whole uh part right here he recites a psalm 
that uh, all of us are sinners and nobody is uh, right in the sight of the Heavenly Father. There's none that uh, seek after the Heavenly Father. I could have sworn that there was a part that we all fall short of the glory. Maybe that's a little bit further down. Right. But again, going back to verse 20, that what none of us by the keeping of the law, by the deeds of the law can ever be made right in the sight of the Heavenly Father. So what will make us right in the sight of the Heavenly Father? Let's continue. And even if you took, uh, I'm sorry, even if you look at uh, the subtitle here uh, for verse uh, 21, it says justification by faith, not justification by the law. Now, again, even like Paul says, uh, you know, I believe like the last uh, verse in this chapter, we establish the law. We keep the law. I am not saying that we don't keep the law. We are not Christians. We're not going to say something foolish. Oh, you don't have to keep the law. No. We understand what that means when it says that Yahweh Shai fulfilled the law. It means that what he fulfilled the things that was written about him. That's a whole nother topic for a whole nother video. But we understand that what? Justification for the elect comes by what? By faith. Right? So let's continue and we're going to use Abraham as an example of that as well. Right? So verse 21. Now by the, I'm sorry, but now the righteousness of the Heavenly Father, which matter of fact, I'll read this in the NLT. Right. So it says, but now God, which is the heavenly father, Yahweh, has shown us a way to be made right with him. Right. Not according again, not according to the law. Right. Has shown us a way to be made right with him without keeping the requirements of the law. Now, do we still keep the law? Yes, we do. We still do what is required in the law. Follow the dietary laws. You know, don't commit adultery, so forth and so forth. What we can do in this captivity. Right. Because being in this captivity, we can't keep the law perfectly. It's impossible. And we're also in sinful flesh. So it's impossible for us to keep the law. Just like one example, working on the Sabbath. You may have a job that, hey, you may have to work on the Sabbath. If you work on the Sabbath, what? That's breaking the Sabbath. You have now what? Uh, if, like the scriptures say, if you offend in one, you've offended in everything. So you see that what you're not perfect in the law. You can't keep the law perfectly because if you offend in one, you offend in every single law. So again, what will be, how will we, how will be, sorry, how will we, God damn it. How are we going to be justified in the sight of the heavenly father? Again, according to faith, right? As was promised, continuing in verse 21, as was promised in the writings of Moses and the prophets long ago. So this was written in the law and in the prophets, right? Long ago, that the Heavenly Father was going to make this way for us, right? Because even Moses said that, I know that you guys are pretty much going to, you know, fall away from the Heavenly Father. You're not going to be obedient unto him. Verse 22, we are made right, by, I'm sorry, with God by placing our faith in Yahweh Shai HaMashiach. And this is true for everyone, which the everyone is Israel, but that's only going to be the elect. And this is true for everyone who believes, no matter who we are, which again, this is again only for Israel. This is not for the whole world. You got to understand that, right? So we are made right with the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, by placing our trust in Yahweh Shai. Why? By placing our trust because what? Yahweh Shai became a sacrifice for the nation of Israel. And by believing on his sacrifice, believing in his, uh, uh, believing on his, uh, you know, his sacrifice, him shedding his blood for us, beginning with, uh, beginning with the elect of the nation of Israel, and then that will trickle down to the rest of the nation, right? Believing on him, we are going to be what? Justified in the sight of the Heavenly Father. Because what? We believe in the one whom the Heavenly Father sent. We believe in the sacrifice of Yahweh Shai, right? We, be we believe that, look, we're not going to be made right according to the law because what Israel went off over and over and over. When you go into the book of Judges, Israel would uh, be with the Heavenly Father. Then they do something that would make them against the Heavenly Father. Then the Heavenly Father would put them in captivity. Then they cry back unto the Lord, save us. He sends them a deliverer. Israel is good with the Heavenly Father for some time. Then they go back against the Heavenly Father, put them in captivity again. Then they send the Savior. And it was just this on and off thing over and over and over. So we put the law into the ground to a point where it's like you guys can't keep the law. So there has to be a, a better way for you guys to be brought back unto me. And the Heavenly Father gave us this way through his son, Yahweh Shai. That's why Yahweh Shai said, what? No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. Not according to the law, but according to what? Having faith in Yahweh Shai. 
continuing in verse 23, for everyone has sinned, which is in Israel. We are, all, I'm sorry, right, this is the verse I was looking for, Salakia earlier. It says, for everyone has sinned, we all fall short of God's glorious standard, right? What's that standard? Upholding of the law, but what we couldn't keep that, right? Which even back then, if I could find that precept, even back then the Heavenly Father had a problem with what? Our faith, right? Which, Lord's law, I'll get that precept, Lord's law, I remember. So continuing, verse 24, yet the Heavenly Father with undeserved kindness declares that we are righteous. He did this through Yahweh Shai when he freed us from the penalty of sins, right? Because if you break the law, some of these laws you're supposed to be put to death, right? Like adultery and things like that, right? But what? For some of our people that have committed these things, right? The Heavenly Father didn't put us to death for these things. He what? He gave us grace in this time, which grace represent means what? Favor. I'm having favor on you. Get yourself together. Clean up your act, right? And therefore, what? You'll be, uh, you believe in my son and you will be saved. This is the grace period. This is the favor that the Heavenly Father has given unto us right now for us to clean up our act and for us to get better. Right. To, to, to no longer conform to the ways of this world, but to conform to the image of his son, Yahweh Shai, to be like Yahweh Shai. Now, we're not going to be 100 percent like Yahweh Shai, but to the best of our abil abilities, we should mimic Yahweh Shai. Because what? Yahweh Shai was accepted by the father. And again, if we believe in the son and try to mimic the son, we will also, Lord's willing, of course, if we're of that number, if we're of the elect, we will also be accepted by the heavenly father. Not according to the deeds of the law, but according to faith. That is the whole reason why the Heavenly Father sent his son. If the Heavenly Father cared about the law, he would have never brought his son down. That's the importance of Yahweh Shai. But these Sakari guys, beginning with their, their, uh, the head, uh, Al-Azhar, missed that point. They want to push Yahweh Shai to the side like Yahweh Shai is not important. Yahweh Shai is known as the corner, pretty much the cornerstone of our faith. Without him, we are nothing. He even says it, I believe, in the book of John. For without me, uh, for without me, you can, uh, roughly paraphrasing, so I apologize if I butcher it. For uh, without me, you can do nothing. We can't do anything with Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai is our bedrock. Yahweh Shai is our cornerstone. We need Yahweh Shai. We need that sacrifice. We needed him as much as it, you know, it, it was a painful thing for him to go through. And it's even a painful thing to read about. He needed to do that so that way we can be brought back unto the Heavenly Father because we couldn't do it according to the law. We've all done things uh, uh, again, contrary to the law that we deserve death, right? So therefore, we need a, a, a better, we need a, a perfect sacrifice. And he, and he is that, or sorry, he was that perfect sacrifice for us. And believing on that sacrifice, right, having that faith, makes us right in the eyes of the Heavenly Father, not according to the law, but according to faith. It's very important that we emphasize faith because faith is what's going to get you through these times. It's not the keeping of the law when all hell breaks loose. It's not the keeping of the law that's going to keep you stable in a time of where there's a lack of food and a lack of water, when all hell is breaking loose and people are killing each other and things like this. No, it's going to be your faith in who? In Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai, that Lord, please deliver me in the time of trouble. You're not going to be thinking about the law saying, oh, well, um, law this, uh, save me from this peril. No, you're going to be calling upon the Lord, calling upon him in his true name and saying, Lord, Baba Gusha, deliver me from this peril. Deliver me from this, uh, this, uh, persecution. Deliver me from this, uh, peril that I'm in. And if I, and if not, you know, as far as like when I, uh, the thing that I'm thinking about, as far as like with the uh, guillotine, if you are presented with the MOTB and you have to either take, it's either that or death, Lord, please allow me to have the spirit to just take the death and please let me die a manful spirit. You're not going to be going according to, you're not going to go to the law and ask the Lord to give you the strength for that. You're going to go to the, the heavenly father through his son. And this is what shows faith. And that's what the heavenly father wants. Which, matter of fact, let me jump to that precept, because that was even back then the problem that the Heavenly Father had with our people. Uh, where is it? is it? Right here it is. Right, I'll just hit the point. Deuteronomy chapter 32 and 20. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be, for they are a very forward generation. Forward means to be contrary. 
right? They are very forward or contrary generation. Children in whom is no faith. That was always the thing that the Heavenly Father had an issue with. Was that our people lacked faith. Our people literally saw the Red Sea, which is the Gulf of Suez, split. He led them by the way with the pillar of uh, fire by night and the cloud by day. He fed them manna. He uh, used Moses to uh, uh, bring, uh, uh, clave the rock and water gushed out. All these things would, should increase your faith. I'm like, wow, this is what our God did. He spread the sea. He uh, made water for us. He fed us with manna of bread from heaven. What kind of God is this? My God, this is amazing. This should increase your faith. But what? Are people still, uh, can he do this? Can he do that? Can he, it's like, yo, what the fuck? Like, this is why when you read Second Ezra, I believe it's the first chapter, the Heavenly Father says, what more can I do for unto you? I've done everything that I possibly can. And you guys just keep rebelling against me. You have no faith. You don't believe in anything that I do. That was always the Heavenly Father's issue was our people's lack of faith in him. This is why, beginning with the Apostle and Elders Great Millstone, we always emphasize faith because it's very important. Faith is the most important thing. Now, yes, again, we establish the law. We keep the law. We try to do keep the law to the best of our abilities in this wicked society. But the most important thing is having faith in the sacrifice of Yahweh Shai, having faith that, hey, if I die for this truth, if I just endure this truth, to endure this hell, endure this bullshit life that I have to deal with in the name of my Lord, I can have that eternal life. I can have that uh, be delivered from the second death. The law doesn't give you this hope. The law doesn't give you this faith. The law really condemns you because, again, going back to uh, Romans 3, uh, where is it? Right, for verse uh, for uh, verse 20, it says, For no one can ever be made right with the Heavenly Father by doing what the law commands. The law simply shows us how sinful we are. Right, it just shows you that, hey, you probably committed adultery at some point in life. We probably, or most of all of us, have broken the dietary law. It just shows us pretty much um, bringing a laundry list to the Heavenly Father of the iniquities that we've committed. And that what pretty much condemns us, that won't make us right in the sight of the Heavenly Father. That won't, make, that won't make us pure or clean in His sight. He'll just say, get this thing from me. This thing is filthy. But believing and having faith in Yahweh believing in the Son of the Most High, that makes you right in His sight. That although a just man falleth seven times, although, excuse me, although we fall short of the glory, still having faith in the promises of what the Heavenly Father says, that's what He likes. That's what makes. Uh, that's what He delights in. Right. It even says that in uh, Hebrews, uh, um, this eleventh chapter, for he that cometh to the Heavenly Father must believe that He is. Now, again, yes, do, when you keep the law, does that show your faith in the Heavenly Father? Absolutely. That, that's not to be taken as something light uh, or put tossed to the side. Absolutely. But it, again, it is your faith in the Heavenly Father. The faith in what? The promises. Because the Heavenly Father made promises to our nation, beginning with our forefather Aram, that what your uh, seed will be as the sand of the sea. It wasn't according to anything with the law. It was according to, look, I'm going to make you make of you a great nation. And Abraham believed the things that the Heavenly Father was telling him. It wasn't anything having to do with the law. No, it was all according to Abraham's faith. That's why, you know, Abraham is known as the father of, of, of faith because of the uh, so great faith that Abraham showed. Even to the point that, hey, the Heavenly Father tested Abraham and said, look, sacrifice your son. And it tells you that in the book of Hebrews that he had so much faith that he believed that the Heavenly Father would bring his son back from the dead. Because you said that, hey, through him, I'm going to have this great multitude of people. So even if I sacrifice him, I know that you're still going to fulfill that even if I have to kill him. That's that's hella faith right there. That's super faith. Not anything to do with the law. All according to faith. And that's what the Heavenly Father likes. He was always displeased going back to Deuteronomy 32 and 20. A children in whom is no faith that always irritated him, that always irked him and bothered him, the lack of faith that our people had. And this is why he gave us this way. I want to see faith. 
I've seen y'all try to keep the law. And yeah, y'all may have done things here, right here and there and whatever. Now, obviously, we didn't keep the law to the uh, to, to the standard that we should have. But what that faith is what really irks me that not believing in me, because like when I do miracles for y'all, it's like y'all just go away from me. That's what always bothered him. And that's what he wants to see in this time period, faith. That's why in this time period, right, it's always emphasized, uh, begin with the apostle, elders, a great millstone to what build up your faith for these times, because that's what's going to be tested. And I apologize for going on a long tangent, but that's the important thing of this ministry is the faith. Again, not saying that the law to toss the law aside like it's not important. No. Like Paul says, yes, we established the law. And I'm going to read that as well. But the faith is very important. The faith is what's going to justify the elect in the sight of the Heavenly Father, which the elect have already been predest predestinated or anyways. But Salakia for that long tangent, but faith must be emphasized. So let's continue back from verse 2. It says, we are made right with the Heavenly Father by placing our faith in Yahweh Shai. And this is true for everyone who believes, no matter who we are, which, again, that only applies to the nation of Israel. For everyone has sinned, and we all fall short of God's glorious standard. Yet the Heavenly Father, with undeserved kindness, declares that we are righteous. He did this through Hamashiach Yahweh when he freed us from the penalty of our sins. For the Heavenly Father presented Yahweh as the sacrifice for sin, People are made right with the Heavenly Father when they believe that Yahweh sacrificed his life. What? Right? Shedding his blood. This sacrifice shows that the Heavenly Father was being fair when he held back and did not punish those who in times past sinned. I'm sorry, who uh, who did not, I'm sorry, and did not punish those who sinned in times past. For he was looking ahead and, and including, I'm sorry, for he was looking ahead and including them in what he would do in this present time. The Heavenly Father did this to demonstrate his righteousness, for he himself is fair and just, and he declares sinners to be right in his sight, right? He declares sinners to be right in his sight when they believe in Yahweh Shai, not according to the law. Again, because our people are very hard-headed, that's one of the things that the Heavenly Father says, that our people are hard-headed and stiff-necked. We are not saying to not keep the law. We are... We are not like the Christian church that say the laws are done away with. No, we establish the law. But understand that you're only going to be made right or righteous in the sight of the Heavenly Father by believing on his son. That is the system that the Heavenly Father has set up. Right. So continue. Can we boast then that we have done anything to be accepted by the Heavenly Father? No. Because our acquittal is not based on obeying the law. It is based on faith. So we are made right with the Heavenly Father through faith and not obeying the law. Now, pause right there. Again, when it says not obeying the law, it doesn't mean the laws are done away with. No, it just means we're not held up to that standard. Like I said earlier, we're not held. We, we fall short of God's. Uh, where is it? Let me read it again. Uh, we fall short of God's glorious standard, which was what? The law. We're not held up to that. We're held up to what? Faith. Having faith in the Son. All right? I want to really explain this because our people can really be like that dude would say, I may be remedial. Yeah, our people can be remedial at times. Right? So verse 29, after all, is God the God of the Jews only? Isn't he also the God of the Gentiles? Of course he is, which those Gentiles are Israelites that fell away from being Israelites. They fell away from their heritage. There is only one God, and he makes people right with himself only by faith, whether they are Jews or Gentiles, which they're both Israelites, right? It says, well, then, if we emphasize faith, does that mean that we can forget about the law? Of course not. In fact, only when we have faith do we truly fulfill the law. See? So he's not saying that, look, although we're emphasizing so much on faith that we just toss the law to the side. No. But when we fulfill the law, when we do the things of the law, we're showing what? That we have faith in the Heavenly Father. When you don't commit adultery, when you don't eat, when you, I'm sorry, when you uh, follow the dietary law, that is a form of faith. But that's not something that you hang up and say, oh, I'm righteous because I did this. No, but you're showing that, hey, your faith of like, 
this is my culture. This is my uh, my Hebraic culture. This is what I believe in. And I believe that my father, uh, my father has set up certain standards for me to follow and what I can and cannot do. I cannot eat pork. I cannot eat shrimp. I cannot eat the things that I used to do. Now that I have awoken to who I am, that I'm an Israelite, this is my culture, I'm not allowed to do these things. And these actions show your faith to, towards the Heavenly Father. Let's say you may have been adulterer. I'm not doing that anymore. I'm not messing with another man's, uh, other men's women. I'm going to only have my woman or I'm just going to stay to myself. That is showing faith in the Heavenly Father. So, the, you know, sometimes doing the works of the Lord do show your faith. But again, you cannot, we cannot be, we're not being held to that standard of, of fulfilling the law because we can't. Right. Now let's get into Romans, the fourth chapter right now. Like I mentioned, let's go to Romans 15 and four. I did quote it, but let's read it real quick. And the KJV, it says Romans 15 and four says for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So things that were written aforetime were written for our learning so that way we can uh, apply them now in these times. So now let's look at our father Abraham, right? Which Abraham is, uh, has been called the father of faith, right? Uh, let me see. Yeah, let me, I'll read in the NLT. So it says, Romans uh, 4 and 1, it says, Abraham was humanly speaking the founder of, I'm f sorry, the founder of our, which I'm not going to say that word, Israelite nation. What did he discover about being made right with the Heavenly Father? If his good deeds made him acceptable to the Heavenly Father, he would have something to boast about, right? Which is what works, right? Because when you read about the story of Abraham in the beginning, which Abraham's story be uh, begins with in, um, what you call it, uh, Genesis, the 12th chapter, and even which, matter of fact, let me go to that real quick because there's a point to even show you how Abraham was showing faith even back then, right? Now, this is Genesis 12, right? Nothing to do with works. Look at Abraham's actions, and it shows you his faith in the Heavenly Father, right? And these actions is showing faith. This is Genesis 12 and 1. It says, Now Yahweh had said unto Abram, Abram, right? Before his name was Abraham, he was Abram. Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee and I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing and I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So Abram departed as Yahweh had spoken unto him, showing you automatically the heavenly father just said something and promised him, look. Leave your country, leave your kindred, leave your family behind, and I will make of you a great nation. The Heavenly Father just promised him something, and Abraham moved with that. Just like, uh, what's his name? Noah. It tells you that in Hebrews that what? That chapter, that entire chapter is, uh, is about men, that, uh, men and their faith. That what? Noah was moved with fear and prepared the ark. Showing you what? It's all about faith. Now, again, not getting rid of the law, but what? The emphasis here, the importance is what? having faith in the Heavenly Father through His Son. That is the thing that, again, always irked the Heavenly Father by our people, is our lack of faith. That's why He set up this time for us to have faith. Show me that faith. Show me that you believe in me. Because that's what He wanted. It's the same thing. Think of it like this. With a man and a woman, right? You want your woman, for those of you brothers who have women, you want your woman to what? To confide in you, to believe in you, to look to you. You want that for your woman. That's the same. What Israel is likened unto the woman of the Heavenly Father. And that's the same thing that the Heavenly Father wants for his nation. He wants us to what? To look to him, to confide in him, to trust in him. Proverbs 3 and 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lead not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. That is the problem with our people. Our people don't acknowledge the heavenly father in the things that they did when you go to the story with joshua and caleb when they gave the good report right but you had the other uh the other israelites that gave the uh, the negative report they gave the bad report saying that oh the the the, uh, the canaanites they be grasshoppers in our sight we we won't be able to overtake them why because they didn't acknowledge the heavenly father in their thoughts they didn't show faith they didn't think that hold on 
Yahweh, what can you do to help us? Because these are the nations that look powerful. They look strong. They, they look too much for us. But what can, can you can you over? Can you help us defeat them? Can you over help us overtake them? Because they look too powerful for us. Right. Joshua and Caleb, what they considered the Heavenly Father, they considered the Heavenly Father. Their thoughts said, look, if the Heavenly Father be pleased with us, we can overtake them. They be food in our sight. We can take them down because they considered the Heavenly Father. Their, they, their mind was toward the Heavenly Father. Right. That's why going back to Deuteronomy 32 and 20, what he said, a, a forward generation. Right. Uh, our mind is not uh, is not at one with the Heavenly Father. So it's the same thing. Think of it again with between a man and a woman. You want your woman to be at one with you. So that way you're on one accord. So that way what? She confides in you. Confides in you. She trusts you. She looks to you for everything. She comes to you for everything. That's what a man wants in his woman. It's the same thing with the Heavenly Father. He wants us to what? Again, Proverbs 3 and 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and in all thy ways. Acknowledge him. Consider him in everything. That's the problem with our people. The problem with our people right now is our people are not acknowledging the Heavenly Father in anything at all. And that shows a lack of faith because you don't think that the Heavenly Father has anything to do with your, anything in your life. Which even I myself, I need to do that more as well to acknowledge the Heavenly Father in all the things that I do. Or all the things that are happen in my life. That is something that we all need to do. So going back to Abraham here in uh, Genesis the 12th chapter. That that is just, hey, I'm going to make you a, make of you a great nation. Get from your kindred, get from your family, get out that land. Go to this land, which I'm going to show you. And y'all, you're going to be a great nation. Just the Heavenly Father making that promise and saying that to him. Abraham departed. Showing what? Faith. All right. So going back to verse 2. If his good deeds had made him acceptable to Heavenly Father... He would have to, he would have something to boast about, but that was not God's way. See, for the scripture tells us Abraham believed the heavenly father and the heavenly father counted him as righteous because of what? Was it because of the law? No, because of his faith. See, because of Abraham's faith that when the heavenly father said these things, uh, made him these promises, he believed the things that the Heavenly Father said, which I'm going to go into that account right now. That's also in the book of Genesis. Sorry. The 15th chapter. Right? See, this is when the Heavenly Father promised Abraham a son. Genesis chapter 15 and 1. After these things, the word of Yahweh came unto Abraham in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy, and thy exceeding great reward. And Abram said, Lord Yahweh, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless, and the steward of my house is this Eleazar of Damascus? And Abram said, Behold, uh, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is mine heir. Right, talking about uh, his, again, his steward, right? Because if I'm not mistaken, uh, if, if I remember reading from the Manners and Customs Bible, that uh, if a man didn't have seed, he would leave it to pretty much the steward, because the steward, you know, is like the right hand man. You'd pretty much entrust everything to him if if the man didn't have a seat. So that's why he's saying it, saying that. Excuse me. Verse five. I'm sorry. Verse four. And behold, the word of Yahweh came unto him, saying, "This shall be thine heir." Right. Again, we're not seeing the heavenly Father bring up anything to do with um what you call it with the law. The heavenly Father is making Abraham a promise. Right. Again, the subtitle: Abraham, Abraham promised a son. So again, and behold, the word of Yahweh came unto him, saying, this shall, this shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. Talking about Isaac. And he brought him forth and look, I'm sorry, he brought him forth abroad and said, look now toward heaven and tell the stars if thou, sh uh, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, so shall thy seed be. Right? Now let's read verse six in the NLT. And Abraham believed the Lord Yahweh, and Yahweh counted him as righteous because of his faith. Nothing to do with the law. It was because of Abraham's faith. He, hey, I, I'm gonna promise you a son. I'm gonna give you a son. Abraham said, "Oh, you gonna give me a son? I believe you." Yahweh counted him as righteous because of that. End of story. That's it.
I should I should end the video just on that, but I'm not. Showing you the what? It's about the faith. 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 There's nothing wrong with having faith, people. It's a beautiful thing. See? So going back to uh, verse 4, it says, When people work, I'm sorry, in the NLT, Romans 4 and 4 says, When people work, their wages are not a gift, but something they have earned. Right? If you work and you do your hours, you're not getting this because, oh, I'm going to be uh, favorable to you. I'm going to give you this thousand dollar check no you're giving them because what they've did their hours they're they're owed their money right but people are counted as righteous i'm sorry but people are counted as righteous not because of their work but because of their faith in god who forgives sinners through his son yahweh shai excuse me apologies david also spoke of this when he described the happiness of those who are declared righteous without working for it Right. Going into what that psalm where the heavenly father, uh, I'm sorry, it's not the heavenly father. David talks about the blessedness of those whom the heavenly father would not Im uh, impute iniquity. David is another example of what we can have uh, a showing of faith because David committed what adultery with Bathsheba. And David got what is known as the sure mercies of David, where the heavenly father could have killed him, which really the heavenly father killed David stillborn. So in, in a way, David was still judged. But David himself wasn't judged. He wasn't put to death because what? According to the law, David should have been put to death. You committed, uh, even if he's the king, David committed uh, adultery with Bathsheba, put him to death. But we see that that didn't happen. The heavenly father had favor on David. Heavenly father had, uh, uh, gave David grace. He gave him mercy. That's why in the Psalm 51, take not thy Holy Spirit because David acknowledged his sin. And another example, right, is uh, uh, the difference to show you what that forward mind that the Heavenly Father hates. Because although David committed iniquity, although David sinned, he falls short. His mind was toward the Heavenly Father. And that's what the Heavenly Father wants. David showed faith in the Heavenly Father. But who's an individual that didn't show faith toward the Heavenly Father? That went the opposite way. Saul. Because with Saul, Saul was the previous king before David. And what did Saul do? Saul had a forward, a contrary mind to the Heavenly Father. He was supposed to wait for Samuel. He didn't. He sacrificed and he did something that displeased the Heavenly Father. And he continued to do these things. Again, another story is with what? Uh, with uh, Amalek. He was supposed to destroy, completely destroy the Amalekites. Kill the king off kill, off, kill off all the beasts, kill off the women and children. He didn't do that. His mind was still forward towards the Heavenly Father. See, that is the difference. Not having faith gives you a forward mind, a contrary mind towards the Heavenly Father. And what was the end of Saul? He died. David was given mercy. Uh, let's read this. Uh, I'll read verse 9. <clears throat> uh, Romans chapter 4 verse 9 says, Now this blessing, I'm sorry, now is now is this blessing only for the Jews or is it also for the uncircumcised Gentiles? Which, again, those Gentiles are Israelites that fell away from their customs. Right? It's not talking about every Gentile, everybody's accepted. No. Again, the law it was given uh, uh uh, the law was given to those who are under the law. Who was under the law? Israelites. So these Gentiles who are being called into the fold are Israelites that fell away from their customs. That goes into the uh, Greek uh, Greek captivity, right? With Antiochus Epiphany and things like that, who pretty much gave that decree that all should be one people, pretty much making it to where Israel wasn't calling themselves Israelites anymore. Says, uh, well, we have been saying that Abraham was counted as righteous by the Heavenly Father because of his faith. How did this happen? Was he counted as righteous only after he was circumcised? Or was it before he was circumcised? Clearly, the Heavenly Father accepted Abraham before he was circumcised. I believe that's in, is it the 17th chapter or 18th chapter? 
Okay, right. So here, I'm not going to read this, but in the 17th chapter, this is when the Heavenly Father gives Abraham the covenant of circumcision. And like I read in Genesis, the 15th chapter, what? He, uh, in the 15th chapter, the Heavenly Father promised Abram a son and what the Heavenly Father counted him righteous because of his faith, because of his faith, excuse me, before giving him the covenant of circumcision, showing that what the Heavenly Father accepted Abraham based on his faith without any deeds of the law, without keeping of the law. Abraham was already accepted by the Heavenly Father because of his faith, nothing to do with the deeds of the law. Now, it doesn't mean that what when Abraham was walking the earth, does that mean that he was uh, was eating abominable foods, wasn't doing this and that? No. But it means that the Heavenly Father accepted Abraham based upon his faith that he uh, that the Heavenly Father, I'm sorry, based upon Abraham's faith in the Heavenly Father. The Heavenly Father counted him as righteous because of that. See, it's about the faith again. And I apologize if I sound like a broken record, but you have to understand that. Now, I want to bring up this final precept here in Hebrews, the fourth chapter. I'll start at verse one. Uh, yeah, I'll read this in the KJV. It says, let us therefore fear lest a promise being left left uh, uh, left us of entering into his rest. Any of you should seem uh, should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them not being mixed with faith in them that heard it see again faith when we all came into this truth it was based upon what faith nothing having to do with the works of the law i didn't know a single damn thing about no israelites and i, I had read the bible a couple of times i remember trying to read the bible trying to read the book of genesis with the flood i made it up like to, to the seventh chapter i think like eight chapter and i was like i don't even know what the hell i read Right. I previously went to church, Catholic church and all that. Right. But besides the point, most of us came here with no works, nothing. Bunch of sinners doing a bunch of iniquity in the world. But when we heard the truth, we heard the true name of the Heavenly Father. We took it with what? With faith. Not having to do anything with any deeds of the law according to faith. And I'm very sure that's true for majority of us. Or probably I, I'll even be almost bold enough to say Oh, I'll, I'll say it. A hundred percent of us came here pretty much based upon faith that we heard. Oh, we're Israelites. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh, Yahweh Shai. Yeah, sign me up. I'm in. Nothing having to do with keeping of the law. It was all based upon faith. And that's just what we're saying. We're not saying that the law is done away with. We're not putting aside the law. No, but we're saying that faith is what's going to make you accept, uh, accepted back unto the Heavenly Father. Or should I say faith? Is what's going to uh, make the elect, elect acceptable unto the Heavenly Father. It's not keeping of the law. Abraham is an example of that. He was accepted based upon his faith in the Heavenly Father. That's what made the Heavenly Father happy. A man who has faith in me. See? Right? And again, hearing the, uh, hearing the gospel, it was preached unto us. We heard the gospel and what? Being mixed with faith, which that faith is a gift given by the Heavenly Father through His Son, it profited us. But to those who it wasn't mixed with faith, who wasn't given the gift of faith, it did not profit them. Showing again, it's about faith. <sighs> Sometimes it, it's a good thing that this comes out because we can all we can always get deeper into our understanding of the scriptures. And this could also, you know, sharpen up our swords as well and also give us a better understanding of the scriptures, sharpen up our sword and just in general for us to edify the sheep, because that's why we're out here. Uh, that's why we've been uh, 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 raised up to do. But it does get irritating and frustrating sometimes with Israel because it's like we should know better. We've been given the spirit to understand the book. And it's just like, I don't know what Sakari's issue is with Paul, but you got to get rid of it because... Your salvation's on the line. And to say something as wild as Paul was rebuked by the uh, the, ap the apostles, the head apostles and all that, is some wild shit to hear. That, that's just, that sounds crazy to me. But I don't want to go on a rant, but I pray this video is edifying. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachak, Wadash, double honors to the apostle elders of Great Millstone, peace and blessings to all for luck. Keep the faith.
Shalom.